What's up everyone? Steve here again from RC Tanks and Trucks 24-7. I'm pretty excited. I have another tank for you guys to unbox. This time it's the Henglong British Challenger 2. So this guy is from Banggood and it's recently been put on their website. So if you want to go check it out, I'll leave the link in the description down below. But let's have a look around this box. So as it says here, this is the MZ version, promotional uh, version, which includes a drive uh, metal or zinc alloy gearbox, metal tracks and a metal rear, uh, I think maybe idler wheel so that's pretty cool it does come in different versions as well but uh, that's on the other side of the box we'll look at in one sec now these Henlong boxes they come a long way they look really awesome same as one that came out for the King Tiger I thought that looks really sweet as you can see it looks pretty sweet 116 scale 2x4 gigahertz main battle tank and here in the top side of the box it has your 2x4 gigahertz controller your basic controls your volume adjustment and all that kind of stuff but uh, we'll definitely look at this later on through the video and on the other side of the box, as you can see, a really nice cutaway of the real Challenger 2 tank. Gives you a little bit of a reference about the tank, and as well, a little bit more here about it as well. A few specs here, gives you what is what, and also here, just about the Challenger 2. And here's what I was mentioning before about the different versions. You have a standard version, promotional version, um, PZ, S, MZ, and MS. So, there are a lot. Um, not sure which one's the best. The steel gear will be the best. So, probably this one here. Hardens black steel gears. I got this version, but uh, we'll see how we go anyway. Top of the box gives you a little bit of uh, description about it. Has 320 degrees of movement for the turret. Tells you it's a BB firing tank, 6mm plastic BBs. Does have suspension. It's got, does have a smoke system. Shoots BBs. Uh, barrel moves up and down. Does have a nice sound unit as well. Which your Henglong ones have improved dramatically since uh, many years ago. And also does have lights. Cool. Last side of the box, while we open it up, does have uh, little specs about the actual tank here itself. 25 meters you can shoot with the uh, upgraded air gun, so don't think about that. It still does shoot pretty fast. 6 millimeter BB bullets, 100 um, BBs, 320 degrees turret rotation, maximal vertical climbing angle of the gun up and down is 20 degrees. The grade in which it can climb is 30 degrees. Full length, 730 millimeters, width. 230 millimeters and a height of 195 millimeters. Now, also, this is ready to run. Only thing that you need to buy for this is six AA batteries for the transmitter itself. It does come with the battery for the tank and the charger. But enough of that. Let's go see what you get inside. Now, I know it's been a while since I've done a tank video. Sorry about that, guys. I'm just waiting for the new stuff to come in. But uh, first things first, nice manual here. Does also come with like a target practice thing in the back in cardboard and some other stickers here, but we'll go through uh, more in depth of this later on. Now, first and foremost, have a little jammed in here, a little, I guess, a country adapter because it doesn't have the one that I need because I'm in Australia, so there we go. And a lot of accessories. So, first up, here we have our charger. Two packets here of accessories on top, which you need to add to the real of the tank you put on later on but uh, I'll go through further more detail later on your six millimeter bullets and a battle tank accessory parts I'll open that later on now this particular version because it is the upgraded version also has like this nice airbrushing to kind of accentuate some of the parts that would get dirty uh, on the real tank that does also have a standard version which is available um, from Banggood as well which is basically just a a, b a base yellow color so it doesn't look as cool as this but anyway let's go get this out of the foam clean up some of this stuff and then let's have a closer look can't forget our controller though wow it's pretty big to be honest yeah there we go it looks very nice i love a tank with metal tracks basic tracks just don't do it justice kind of a bit more realistic and a bit uh or it's just heavier kind of just looks more scale Okay, first things first, let's just go through the manual. It does come with some nice stickers to decorate the tank if you see fit. It does also have this little shooting target practice thing here. You just kind of set up and you can aim and shoot the BBs and see if you can hit the center of a dot. That's a King Tiger there. Nice instruction manual, Challenger 2. Gives you everything you need to know. And what's, you know, I don't want to, look at this guy. He knows what's going on. You don't want to shoot that in people's eyes because it is a 6mm BB and they do come out with a bit of force. So. This guy gives you a good base understanding of how to use a tank because if it's your first one they might be a little bit complicated you might not know what to do. It gives you how to use a charger, where to plug it in, all that kind of stuff. The little 
fluid here to fill up the tank so it emits the smoke, where to put the AA batteries, all that kind of stuff. The 7.4 volt batteries is in the bottom of the tank, which is pretty cool. I don't need to open up any hatches anymore. How to operate, all that kind of cool stuff. Super spins, not realistic, but it's there anyway. If you like that kind of stuff, how to move the barrel up and down. Why you'd probably need this a lot of the time is to know where all these parts go. Because as you can see, there are a lot of individual parts here that you have to kind of, they're not glued on, you just pressure fit them onto the tank to give it much more realistic look. And I will do that really, really shortly. Also gives you where to put all the stickers if you want to do that. But there we go. And also the smoke oil that goes in the bank, sorry, in the, in the back. Now it gives us how to install a bearing in the rear drive shaft. Okay. Anyway, let's have a look at the rest of the tank. So here are your six millimeter plastic BBs. Really cheap, you can get this on eBay because um, these you're guaranteed you lose these real quick. Now this is one of the bags. You get these little imitation plastic uh, tow ropes, wheel hubs to cover up the screws, and some more parts here and there. Now here is baggy too. A lot of stuff, more oil drums for the back, or fuel drums, sorry. Tow shackles it looks like. Various other parts. Also, you get like a little aerial there. Your machine gun there, which you just pressure fit into the front as well. And these two pieces, these two small aluminium sticks, are for your transmitter, which you just pressure fit in there just like that. Nothing to it. And while we're on the transmitter, that's where you put your six AA batteries in there. Much better transmitter nowadays compared to the older ones. So glad they've... Uh, yeah, gone this new 2.4 gigahertz direction. Now in this little accessories box, there is even more stuff. So it does come with huge amounts of accessories. As you can see, luckily you have that instruction manual to tell you where everything goes. So you can see fuel cans, spare fuel cans on the side. And all this stuff is kind of, I guess, painted as well. So it kind of looks a bit worn as well. Got some various black pieces here. Got your binoculars. What else you got here? A machine gun. I'm not too familiar with the Challenger 2, I'm more into old World War II German tanks, but this British tank was probably one of the best around and is still in service today. I do believe it was introduced um, late 90s. More parts here, little handles, so much stuff, they've really come a long way. And the quality looks decent, spare track link there, cool. Now it's easier to show you all this without the accessories around because, you know, these things can break fairly easily. You have an on and off switch at the bottom here. You have your battery which is like at the bottom as well and that is of size 7.4 volt 1800 milliamp lion battery and as you can see it's two cell and that's why you have this charger here with this funny little end because you charge it via the balance lead you can use any hobby grade charger to charge this guy as well but the one that gets included you charge via the balance lead so you know generally tank batteries last a while because they're not really going too quickly but uh, it's good that these you can straight away kind of use any hobby grade style battery because this is you know a generic size so you can get like a 5000 milliamp or 4500 milliamp and easily fit it in this, um, in this battery compartment as well it's got a Tamiya style connector so there Extremely common. Turn everything back on. We can try it later on. Okay, well, while I'm at the bottom of the tank, you can have a look at the detail at the bottom. So it's not just flat black or flat plastic with no detail. You can see that they've actually gone ahead and painted the bottom as well. Gave a few streaks here as well. And even the wishbones, everything underneath here, are kind of semi detailed. So they're definitely stepping up their game. As you can see, all the road wheels have this nice little colour in there and that's where you put the cap to uh, hide this screw so you don't see that meshed up to your metal tracks and it return rollers up here they don't they're not just there but they actually are functional which is good to see so yeah I'm not the biggest I don't have much knowledge about the Challenger 2 tank but how scale this is or if it's prototypical but from looking at photos and uh, seeing this one they definitely look like they've done you know a good job okay so the Challenger 2 it is obviously a main battle tank and the place of origin is the United Kingdom. Now it was in service since 1998 and is still in service today. As you can see it, it's only been I think in service in the Iraq war and it's only used by the British Army and the uh, Oman Army I believe it is. Now they were produced 
from 1993 to 2002, and apparently there's about 446 of these made. Getting this information from Wikipedia, so I'm sure a lot of you guys who know much more about these tanks can let me know in the comments. But uh, yeah, it apparently 62 and a half tons, or when it's combat ready, 70 about 75 tons. So that's quite massive. It has a huge 120 millimeter main muzzle, which is incredible when you think about it. I'm thinking about my old German World War II tanks and looking at it compared to this guy. Pretty amazing. Now, in real life, the length was 8.3 meters and 13 and a half meters with the gun. So that's huge when you think about it. Apparently, the width was three and a half meters wide and also the height of just under 2.5 meters. If I even look at the size of this, it only had a crew of four. So you had your commander, your gunner, loader slash operator, and also your driver there. Now, it had a massive 1200 horsepower V12 diesel purring at the back there to push this behemoth around. Now, it also does have a really unique suspension system. I believe it was hydro pneumatic suspension. Um, which is pretty state-of-the-art, very nice ride, very different to the ones that the German tanks use, which is the uh, torsion bar system, which was, I think, used from the Tiger I tank and is still used in their tanks today. It also did have a pretty decent top speed, of apparently just under 60 kilometers an hour or 37 uh, kilometers an hour on the road, which, you know, something this big, you wouldn't want to get in its way. Now, apparently the Challenger 2 is one of the safest tanks there are uh, there is um, in service I think it's only lost or had well only two major issues one loss of a tank with a fatality and another one where the some of the personnel got injured the one where it was a fatality and they lost a tank I do believe was a friendly fire incident so yeah that's no good but uh, pretty impressive specs or specs stats when you think of you know it's fighting in the Iraq war and so much stuff happening around you. Now, before I put the accessories on, a lot of you guys might not know what's inside one of these and how they um, tick. So, let me separate the top hole and the lower hole, which generally there's one, two, three, four, five, six screws that I can see at the moment. There might be some more hiding, but uh, it's just easier when there's no accessories on there because they snap really easy. So what I'll do, I'll get rid of all these and hopefully you can just pop it off. Okay, I think I found them all on the first go, so that's it. Once that's separated, carefully, because there are a lot of different components that make this guy work. You have turret rotation motors, you have motor in there for the elevation, and also the BB firing mechanism, uh, but also the sound unit and everything else. So, let me get all this stuff kind of out of the way. Lucky these things are just kind of normal like little connectors which you can just pull and plug out so it's easy you don't really want to drop it like that but it is what it is so you have your upper turret oh, sorry upper hole and your lower hole and basically all we have here here is your gearbox so you have a left gearbox and a right gearbox that's how you can go left or do uh, spins one track and spin complete opposite to the other one so here we have our nice uh, zinc alloy gears here. You can you can get upgraded ones with black hardened gears which are probably beneficial if you're going to be doing a lot of outside running especially in the grass because it's a lot of torque running through there. You have your two basic brushed motors. You have a little speaker here that's con connected up to your brains of the whole unit here. So this is like on an RC car your ESC. So this is a 2.4 gigahertz tank receiver. It gives you your sound, your movement, your turret rotation, uh, your BB firing mechanism, everything is controlled from this little guy right here. It also does have your light set up, as you can see. You have little LEDs running to the to the rear lights here, which is really nice to have. But that is pretty much it. It kind of is semi-sealed. The benefit of not having a torsion bar system is it doesn't have any holes really protruding from the side. So you could probably do a little bit of water, water running with this. The springs are in here you can't really see it but it gives you quite of a nice feel um, you know not as good as a Tamiya tank but it definitely is much better than some of the other hang long tanks I've seen now while I'm on the bottom hole here generally with tanks if it's too tight or too loose you can adjust the idler here it's on the front or 
of like a or the rear of depending on what tank it is this particular one it's on the front on a German tanks it's generally on the rear because the driving sprocket is generally at the front of the tank anyway um, can't see if this can be adjusted to adjust the slack time will tell um, just from looking at it I don't see it can um, if that is a big deal and it's too much or too little you can always take uh, a track link out or put one in vice versa it just depends but that is the lower hole now the upper hole has a few more things going on here at the back you see you've got these two tubes now this guy is a smoke unit and what that does it generates smoke to come out of the exhaust up here which are down the side here you can see you can just follow these two tubes and it pumps out the side there which is pretty cool I like how they've definitely kind of airbrushed or made the vents and all that kind of stuff a little bit uh, darker appearance just to give it a bit more weathered look but that looks really nice I'm glad they've done that because you know a lot of people like that stuff and to fill these up you just normally squirt the oil straight into the tube right here which um, on that I don't think I even got oil but anyway I think that's some issue with shipping to Australia sometimes but here we have another little I guess a daughter board going up to the right turret rotation motor as you can see another little brush motor in there and in here you can see is your this big fat unit here is this is your BB firing mechanism which is all attached to this little daughter board here and we have another motor here which is for the gun elevation so that's the up and down movement this one here is for your left and right and this spins 320 degrees not 360 but also here we've got some LEDs coming up to the front lights here as you can see you just trace these back which is pretty cool so so far so good I'm pretty impressed with this you have this massive gearing that's hooked up to another smaller gear here it's like a that's kind of like your pinion and your spur gear in your RC car but that just needs to rotate slowly it doesn't go fast at all but uh, yeah not much to it but while we got the top top off you can have a look I think they've done a really good job um, yeah, any of you, any people that know Challenger 2s, let me know how detailed or how prototypical this is. So, yeah, and basically this little smoke unit has like a little wick in there and like a little piston that just, it, the wick burns uh, like on a, it's like on oil onto like a, a wet filament and it burns that slowly at, or at a certain temperature and that emits smoke out of these. And you've got this little pump here that goes back and forth to uh, produce the puffs and that's all it is and depending if it's a later one it's proportional so if you give it more throttle the little piston here will increase with the RPM of the drive motors and when you slow down it kind of just slows down as an idle and then it speeds up when you give it throttle so that's pretty cool but there we go in case any of you guys haven't seen inside an RC tank that's basically what it is now all tanks are pretty much similar lower hole upper hole and your turret. Your turret can generally be removed if you just take this ring off. You can just take that off and it just kind of slide out. Simple as that. It also has these little teeths where sometimes it's like a, a key. You just line it up and you can just slide it out. But we don't need to do that now. Just wanted to show you inside the tank. Cool. Now these accessory parts just go together like a model. There's no glue required. You can if you really want to, but it's just basically pressure fit like that and you can always clean up this excess fairly easy just like any I guess model kit but that's all you need to do so yeah there's heaps of them that's for sure now I mentioned this before but the actual accessories you get with this are pretty cool it's uh here is like little fuel cans or water cans at the back here and as you can see you put these together as to make one piece but this is about four different pieces to make this one unit which is quite nice and you can actually use them so if you don't want the the bottles in there you can drive around the tank without them just like that and this particular piece uh, like all the parts pretty much on this kit are pressure fit into the back here so as you can see I've done one example here for the I'm not sure if that's a spare fuel tanks at the back for the tank but it's like a little notch here a notch there and all you need to do is you just kind of pressure fit that in there just like that and it's quite sturdy I guess if you really wanted to you could glue them in there and these guys just slip in 
just like that. So there's your accessories. It, so uh, it definitely helps or um, adds to the realism. These parts here, we kind of cut the spur off, or the, from sorry, cut the sprue off the plastic tree. I guess you can touch up with plastic uh, with some paint, sorry, just to make it look a little bit better. But there are a lot. I'm not going to show you me putting all these on because that's going to take forever. But as you can see, just to build the top machine gun part, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven components for that one piece so yeah pretty intensive now one thing I like about it, it does come with caps to hide the unrealistic screws in each of the wheels and obviously there are three different styles you get the the yellow color ones here which go into the main driving wheels and there's the pressure fit just like that these aren't they don't they're not ball bearings they seem like uh, maybe plastic bushes or brass bushes not too sure but you can always upgrade this stuff later on. Um, good thing about Henlong tanks is they are fairly cheap top grade and if you do the parts are quite cheap and reasonable, reasonable quality as well considering or comparing to a Tamiya tank which are quite expensive. Now here you have for the rear drive wheel here you have a small little cap it's in a different color as well it's got a little notch here that lines up to the notch in the back here as well so you know it's in the right direction so you can just push that guy in, and it's a bit harder to do on camera, but I'll get it. So just, I'll get it on off camera, it's easy to see. And you have a large one here, for the front idler wheel as well. Pretty sweet, but once you put all these guys on, it definitely, there we go, it definitely adds to the realism. So I've got two more to put on the side here, and these aren't going to come off anytime soon. Pressure fit on there nicely just like that as you can see when you put them on it just looks so much better already as you can see once all the accessories on does look very nice that's all the back done like I said you can always touch these small parts up but even these like uh, tow hooks are three pieces so yeah pretty sweet okay now the tank is all done all the accessories are put on it definitely does make it look much more scale much more realistic as well like I mentioned you can glue these on if you like or you can even like add a bit of uh, silver paint to these tow ropes and all that kind of stuff to make it look more weathered than that it is. But as it stands, coming fresh from the factory, Hang Long definitely have up their game. It looks really, really cool. Happy with it so far. Um, yeah, next step, let's put some BBs in here and let's try out the function. So the BBs go in this little one just here. On and off switch is located under here. Just there. What we need to do is open. You get two of these little bags, load them up, pour them in here, and these can fly out pretty quick, smart. And that is all there is. Load it up there. What I'll do, get the uh, battery charged up, and we'll take it outside and show the driving functions. And now to turn the tank on, there's a little on and off switch at the bottom of the tank just here. And also, this hatch up here is if you want to disable or enable the BB gun. It's got an on-off switch, so if you're having kids and you don't want them to shoot them, themselves in the eye or anything like that, you can turn that off. But it's on as default. Turn your controller on, just like this. Little button here, it's got a little lock on there. You push this guy and that will start the tank. And as you can see here, that you have a little V button here. That is to adjust the volume. You can see it goes up quite high. I'll just leave it on low so you can hear me talking. Now the basic controls of the of the tank, push on the right stick here, forward and back, and it goes forward and back. And the, this is proportional. If I just push it a little bit, as you can see, it does crawl. Push it more, it does go even quicker. So that is pretty cool. Um, it does have the super spin, which is unrealistic, but it does. It looks cool. Just like that. Just like that. That's where the two motors are going in opposite directions. Now all the controls for the tank are on this right stick right here. This is the only trim uh, switch that works and that will help it guide, uh, make the tank go straight. So if I push this all the way to the left, the tank will probably start drifting to the left a little bit as it does. Now to counteract that, you just push this in a position where it keeps going straight and that's all you need to do, as you can see there. So you can make the tank kind of go in a nice gentle curves as well if you push forward and a little bit at the same time it will start to turn as well 
pretty cool. Now, this particular, now the left stick, sorry, is where it controls the turret. And it is proportional as well. Push it a little bit, it'll go slowly to the right, as you see. Or push it a bit harder, it'll go all the way around, and that's 320 degrees. Once it hits it, you hear like a little clutch. Just like that. You don't want to keep hitting and letting it, once you hear that noise, stop. And there it is, that's the full turret rotation. Now, the turret does elevate, as you can see. If I push down here, it'll cycle through. Different versions of the um, RX-18 actually can stop and hold it at different levels, but this one, it just cycles through, and that's all it is. Now, the fun part as well, if you push and hold this guy up, it'll shoot a BB. If I just get it back a little bit, you hear that and you'll see the tank actually jumps back a little bit now before I I'll, I'll do a little bit of a test firing with that but down here we have G which is the gun so that's the coaxial machine gun as you can hear it and this one here is a cannon K K for cannon all right and as you can see push it again that does not fire the BB that's just for the sound and just for the look now it does also have LEDs I don't know if you can see them in the light there, but at the front, and also has ones at the back, which you'll be able to see a little bit better, just like that. So that's pretty cool. In the nighttime or in the dusk, it'll look pretty sweet. But uh, yeah, these are quite fun. Once you get the hang of it, it's pretty cool to play around with. Now, what I'll do, I have a little target over there. Let's see if I can actually hit it. Oh, and another thing I forgot to mention. Now, mine didn't come with a smoke hall, but it's readily available on eBay. There's a little button here called smoke. You push that and you can hear your little smoke system going. I don't know if you can see it, but there is smoke emitting out of here. Just here. There are coming out, but it's not good to run it without uh, mowing the oil amount, but it's coming out just here. Just there, and that's pretty cool. So let's start uh, shooting stuff. Okay, so we have a little cardboard cutout that comes with it, and you can adjust, obviously, the height of the barrel, and I'll just see if I can get it just there, push and hold the left stick. Oh, now to cycle down, you have to push and hold this uh, left switch until you're happy with it. Let's try that again. Got him! <laughs> My kids love it. But yeah, it's pretty cool. Now, let's hit that again. And as you can see, to hit it, it's pretty cool. And once you get the uh, accuracy down, it's, it's pretty fun to shoot. But now, let me see if I can actually show you how far it goes. Give you an indication, that fence in the background is around about 10 meters or so away. Now, let's see if you can see the bullet, or the, sorry, the BB. Lift this up. Now it hits the fence. It went over the fence. It went over the fence as well. Let's go down a bit more. As you can see, I don't know if you can hear it, but it does hit that fence. Pretty sweet. So that's around about 10 or 12 meters, give or take. You can get an upgrade kit apparently, which goes around about 25 meters, which, which is pretty awesome. Okay, now the final bit of driving test, I'll, I'll probably do some more videos later on, but a good test for these is how they perform on grass. So this is fairly long. I'm just doing a spin turn there, see if it actually turns it, and it does, it spins it around. It's not the best for your drivetrain, but it, as long as it is metal gear at least, it's going to be beneficial and better than the plastic. Because if you have plastic gears with metal tracks, you're asking for trouble. But I'm just crawling to see how it performs. That's quite nice. Let's see if I can do some slow manoeuvring around. There we go, pretty sweet. I'll give you full speed. Let's do a, a drive-by. Alright, here we go. That's flat out. Pretty cool. So guys, let me know what you think of this tank. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it is available 
from uh, Banggood, link is in the description if you want to go check it out for more information but I think it's a great tank uh, Heng Long, like I've, I've said it a few times, but they've really stepped up their game with the quality of their tanks and especially how they look now I'm not a big Challenger 2 fanatic, I don't know too much about them, I do know you know the basics but just from looking at it it does look pretty prototypical um, and for everyday consumer like myself who doesn't know too much about it would think it looks pretty sweet I do like the detail on this particular uh, metal version, with, uh, the tracks are nice, I do like some of the the, re, the front idler and the rear dry sprocket are all metal which is nice, helps for the realism and a bit of the weight of the tank helps it go over obstacles a little bit better as well the BB gun is pretty cool, especially if you like that function um, yeah, pretty sweet, drives pretty well um, the new 2.8, 2.4 GHz controllers are really good so yeah, let me know what you guys think in the description Steve here again from RC Tanks and Trucks 24-7 Appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video.